or potentially interesting times when it comes to the BBC licence fee. Regular viewers of this channel will know, of course, that if you look at the latest YouGov polling from this year, it shows you that contrary to claims from the BBC, the majority of Brits now think that the BBC should be funded either through advertising or subscriptions. Only around 28% of Brits now support the licence fee slash are being funded through general taxation. But the media minister now, uh, John Whittingdale, admitting that in the future, the licence fee could indeed be ditched and replaced with a subscription model as several Conservative MPs tore into the BBC yesterday. I'm going to have the clips on here. I doubt you'll be seeing them on mainstream media anywhere. But before we get going, guys, please do hit the subscribe button, hit the bell and hit the thumbs up. I'm doing an awful lot here on YouTube and I don't want you to miss any of it. Now, as is being widely reported today, the BBC licence fee could be uh, replaced with a subscription charge according to the media minister, John Whittingdale, which is some progress in itself, but he says that can only happen after universal access to high speed broadband. Speaking at a session of the petitions committee on the TV licence uh, had been triggered 110,000 people signing that petition. John Whittingdale admitting that TV licence could be scrapped for Netflix-style subscription, with John Whittingdale quoted as saying, uh, telling MPs, the rollout of broadband is very fast, we will reach universal coverage, and there will come a time when it'd be possible for us to move forward towards a full subscription service for everybody. But he said, that time has not yet arrived. So of course, on the one hand, this is disappointing in terms of he's still talking in terms of the future but it shows you I think still that there is a realization perhaps in the government that the status quo the ridiculous status quo where people are forced to pay for this service is simply not sustainable so here as I said here are a couple of clips of a couple of conservative MPs who were hitting out at the BBC yesterday during this debate I believe it was the called by the petitions committee and what's really interesting by the way about some of the fiercest critics of the BBC licence fee, if you look, if you haven't noticed already. The most vocal, and I've had Tom Hunt on here before, Ipswich MP, uh, you'll see a couple more in a second, but they tend to be, at the moment, sort of younger Conservative MPs. The idea you'd be forced to pay for the BBC is it, it, simply ludicrous when it's perfectly possible not to use any of their services, not want any of their services, and not certainly be forced to pay for any of their services. So first of all, couple of speeches here, as I said, I really think hit the mark. First of all, here is Conservative MP Jonathan Gullis. Stay tuned. You ain't going to see this broadcast on TV, are you? Here's the clip. The biggest here, issue here is that the BBC is in breach of the obligation set out in its own charter. Firstly, the BBC is obliged to be impartial, yet time and again the BBC appears to be forgetting its commitment to the people. The results of a recent Ofcom survey on the, on the impartiality of the major news programmes show that the BBC was ranked bottom. Secondly, the BBC is also obliged to represent and provide uni uh, unifying programming for all parts of the UK. But despite having various regional branches throughout the United Kingdom, everybody can see the BBC is trapped in a London bubble of its own making. In my constituency survey, 94% said that the BBC does not represent their views. Most areas of the UK who felt let down by the obstructionism of the last parliament voted for change, turning the red wall into a blue one, heralding a move away from the views of Sunny Khan's woke virtue signalling metropolitan elite, so-called progressive agenda. Yet left-wing activists are routinely given platforms on news programmes where they are mas where they masquerade as ordinary people. This lack of honesty and failure to represent those who live outside a 20-mile radius of new broadcasting house is a complete failure to adhere to the Charter obligation to represent all parts of the UK. But worse, the BBC continually pushes the identity politics of that London bubble, shoehorning this divisive narrative into much of its programming. According to the BBC, the countryside is bigoted and only last week skiing too was labelled racist. I ask again, why we should we continue paying a licence fee, the proceeds of which will not benefit the majority of Britain when it is in breach of its own Charter obligations? Now, another a very outspoken Conservative MP, and again, a, a younger a Tory MP has been Ben Bradley, another who has spoken out very vociferously when it comes to the BBC, when it comes to licence fee. He also had something to say on this yesterday. Here's his clip. 
It baffles me that the BBC is spending £100 million on diversity whilst at the same time ditching regional news in order to save £25 million. I think this is one of the clearest indicators that it's out of touch. The government's focusing on reaching out to communities across the country, but sometimes feels like the BBC have forgotten that other places exist outside of London, places that are actually different. And I don't think that the programming represents the full range of thoughts and values that are out there. But in spending this £100 million on diversity of physical characteristics, they seemingly have no plan to combat the lack of diversity of experience, of geography, and diversity of thought. We know that our state institutions can suffer from this. Being based in London inevitably leads to recruiting a middle-class metropolitan demographic. But as far as I can see, this still isn't a priority for the BBC. I struggle to see how they can represent working-class towns like Mansfield and Warsaw if it scraps regional teams and runs the whole thing from London. And given the choice between that diversity budget or regional news, I think the vast majority would take the latter. I honestly don't think, contrary to what some say, they are deliberately biased in their content. I just think they have a tunnel vision based on a lack of genuine diversity uh, of experience and background in their teams because they follow the wrong priorities on things like recruitment. I also think, frankly, it's impossible to maintain the veil of impartiality in the 21st century in a Twitter world where news is so instant and constant that perhaps we should just stop trying to pretend that it can be done. The license fee model isn't sustainable in the long term and with the rise of new technology it's outdated it made sense back in the day when there were three or four channels and government subsidy was vital but nowadays there is no need for taxpayer funded media with sport for choice with a myriad of services to choose from people should have the choice whether to pay and watch bbc content rather than being criminalized and on that point the impact of criminalizing the fee on our courts is massive data last year showed that a third of all women's criminal convictions are for evading the license fee why are we clogging up our courts with issues like this instead of putting time and money into seeking justice for those uh, against those who pose a threat to our society? So there you are, guys. I mean, this this debate is not going away at all. No matter how many in Westminster uh, don't want to listen to uh, the public view on this, the simple fact is anyone can go and look, go and type in on Google. How should BBC be funded, YouGov? You will find a poll that shows a clear majority of Brits now do not want the BBC to be funded by the licence fee. Let's hope that the government realise this. Let's hope the government move forward. And at the end of the day, when you've got channels like this, many others on YouTube, of course, when you've got GB News coming in as well, why on earth should people be forced to pay for a BBC that has proven itself time and time again to be fundamentally a London-centric, middle-class, left-wing outfit. It doesn't make sense. It can't go on. And I think simply the licence fee cannot be sustained for very much longer. But guys, I want to know from you, do you have faith in the government? Do you have faith in Boris Johnson's government to actually do something about this or not? What did you make of those speeches? would love to know as well. And of course, if you want to support this channel, as well as making sure you subscribe, please do give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. And do become a member here on the channel. Do become a supporter by hitting the join button. See the link in the top pin comment. would really appreciate it if you want to become a member and support me here on my channel. And of course, guys, as ever, thank you so much for watching.